and gentlemen, please welcome our mayor, Buddy Dyer. Good afternoon and welcome to the November 16, 2015 meeting of the Orlando City Council Commissioners and uh, those of you in chambers. I would like to recognize the tra tragic events that happened in Paris last Friday night, killing hundreds of innocent people. And I'd like to take just a moment to uh, share a moment of silence and reflect on and remember and pray for the people of Paris and the victims and show solidarity with the city of Paris. Thank you. Here in Orlando, we don't have any known threats, but the safety and security of our residents and visitors um, are always the number one priority of the city and of this council. And our officers have been directed to provide an extra presence and pay special attention to certain locations in light of the events over the weekend. And additionally, I want you to know that our department, along with the fire department, for many years has continued to train and participate in large-scale training exercises for these type of active shooter and terrorist situations. And our officers are aware that they are the first line of defense in such attacks. And I can promise you that they are prepared, but you can do your part as well. If you see anything out of the ordinary, please call 9-11 and report anything suspicious. With that, I would like to begin today's proceedings with the invocation offered today by Reverend Chow Joseph Wynn of St. Philip Van Van Men Catholic Church located on Parr Street, Commissioner Stewart in College Park in, right here in Orlando. Reverend Chow was born in Vietnam and came to the United States at age 15 as a refugee after the fall of Saigon in 1975. He was ordained as a Roman Catholic priest at St. James Cathedral in 1989. In 2003, he was appointed the founding pastor at St. Philip Van Van Men Catholic Church. You may stand or remain seated during the invocation. That will be followed by the pledge led today by District 6 Commissioner Samuel B. Ames. Oh God, from whom all power comes, by whose divine will all must abide. We thank you for our civil liberties and freedom, for our, for our opportunities and our privileges. We ask you to bless, assist, and enlighten the mayor and members of this city council. May they prove worthy of the confidence placed in them by the fellow citizens. May they be just and upright in their thinking, honest in all their actions, and ever be guided by a true conscience in the policies they propose or vote upon. As we gather in your name, may we temper justice with love, so that all our discussions and reflections may be pleasing to you and earn the reward promised to good and faithful servants. We remember in a special way those who are suffering from the tragic acts of terrorism in Paris. We ask for your protection and peace upon the people of the city of Paris, for the victims and their families. Grant us, O Lord, peace in this world. We ask this of you who live and reign with the Father and the Son, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Reverend. call the meeting to order. Madam Clerk, could you call the roll and make a determination of a quorum, please? Commissioner Gray? Here. Commissioner Ortiz? Here. Commissioner Stewart? Here. Commissioner Sheehan? Here. Commissioner Hills? Here. Commissioner Ings? Here. Mayor Dyer? Here. We have a quorum. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Let's take up for consideration the minute meetings from the Agenda Review and City Council so meetings of October 19th. Okay. Motion by Commissioner Sheehan, second by Commissioner Hill. All in favor of the motion indicate so by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, aye. motion carries. That brings us to awards, presentations, and recognitions, which I 
would guess a lot of people are here for today. So um, I'd like to call first on Richard Forbes, who is our historic preservation officer, who will present the winning photographs and it recognize individuals selected as winners of the Historic Preservation Board 2016 Calendar phot Photograph Image Contest. Richard. Thank you, Mayor Dyer, Commissioners. Uh, once again, it's that time of the year to um, debut the 2016 Historic Preservation Board calendar. We've got a great calendar this year, and I want to thank um, all the people that um, have been involved in it. As you know, the Historic Preservation Board has uh, put together a calendar as an educational tool since 1989, and this is the 21st uh, photo competition, so we're very excited about that. Uh, this year, the 2016 calendar features the diverse uh, bungalow architectural style. In Orlando, we've got bungalows found in all of the residential local districts and most of the National Register districts, making it one of the most widespread architectural styles throughout Orlando's historic neighborhoods. Each bungalow in Orlando is a unique composition of features, textures, style, materials, and details, making this style an interesting topic for our calendar. It includes one of the city's oldest bungalows, built in 1905, a home ordered from the Sears catalog, a bungalow built in the late 1910s for early tourists to the city, and a variety of bungalows built during the mid-1920s housing boom. For the photo competition, the contestants were provided the maps of our national register and local districts and simply in instructed to go out and capture their best image. The Historic Preservation Board Publications Committee then has the difficult task of blind judging all the entries to select the 13 that go into the calendar and the cover. I want to thank McCoy Federal Credit Union for continuing and very generous sponsorship for both the printing and the photo competition for 2016. And now we'll get right to the winners of, of the competition. The cover photo was taken by photographer Renuk Nichols and features the bungalow at 1114 East Washington Street in the Lake Lasona Historic District. This bungalow has a feature that most bungalows share, and that's a prominent front porch. This wide wraparound porch invites outdoor entertainment with wide spaces for a swing, table and chairs, and potted plants. The side-facing gables are supported by tapered wood columns on rock-faced concrete piers. The gable ends are clad in wood shingles and feature decorative vents. Built in 1920, Irving A. Stewart, who was a salesman for the Bradshaw Tire Company, lived here. Uh, the photo for January was taken by Scott Nichols of 217 East Amelia Street in the Lake Eola Heights Historic District. Known as the George C. Johnston House, this home is the best example of a California bungalow, also known as the Western Stick style, that we have here in Orlando. The style developed in California in the late 19th century and was utilized by renowned architects such as the Green and Green Brothers and Bernard Maybeck. There's an impressive band of horizontal band of Florida limestone rock providing a base for the carved wood rafters and brackets. These curved rafters, brackets, and paired wooden posts on piers and low pitch roof lines are reminiscent of the Japanese influence in early California bungalows. This house was built before 1923 and is named for Colonel George C. Johnston, who lived here with his wife Ida. Johnston was the president of the Orlando Broadcasting Company and oversaw WDBO, which was the first radio station in Orange County. Uh, the image for February was captured by Gail Peck and shows 1103 East Washington Street, which is in the Lake Lasona Historic District. Picket fence with heart-shaped cutout surrounds this bungalow. This one and a half story craftsman style bungalow was constructed in 1925 and has many of the typical features of a, of a, a bungalow. A band of four light windows stretches across the front gable to give the house a horizontal appearance. Uh, there's some interesting history on this home as it was built for Carmel M. Slaughter who was president of Schnarr and Company and his wife Madge. The Schnarr Company sold insecticides most notably of which was the insecticide to rid the white fly that plagued local citrus groves. Mm. The Slaughter's son, Carmel Slaughter Jr., was an Air Force camp captain of the plane Slicks Chicks during World War II. His plane was shot down during a skirmish on February 10, 1945 in Japan and crashed near a, a temple. Captain Slaughter and all his crew perished. Their remains were cremated and held in the temple near the crash site until they were returned to the U.S. after the war. On March 20, 2013, 
The chief priest of the temple held a ceremony to honor Captain Slaughter and the crew members who died near their temple. The March photo was taken by Katie Magley and shows 1817 East Washington Street in the Lake Lausanne Historic District. This wonderful bungalow is, is in the craftsman style and is a classic example of the Japanese influence with overhanging eaves, low pitched roofs, Japanese brackets, and groupings of short post-like columns. It was built in 1925 for R.L. Merker. April's photo, taken by Angela Hinton, shows 545 Delaney Avenue in the Lake Cherokee Historic District. The image spotlights the second floor balcony of one of the nine bungalows which comprise Hovey's Court. All of these homes were built in 1913 and are all in the craftsman style and constructed with similar materials. While each of the bungalows varies somewhat in design, they all are two stories with a stucco first floor and a shingled upper floor. They were originally built as the Lake Lucerne Plaza Apartments, which were rental guest houses. A marketing brochure described them as being centered around a lavishly landscaped courtyard at the hub of the state with easy access to spring-fed lakes. Lake Lucerne was prime premier real estate 100 years ago and today has some of Orlando's best historic architecture. The May photo is by Dylan York and shows 819 East Pine Street. The house exhibits many of the typical craftsman elements. Uh, the bungalow retains its original wood windows and a craftsman style front entry door. Triangular brackets and lattice work define the gable peak and the roof and it features exposed rafter tails beneath the wide overhang. The concrete rock face blocks that are that are part of the front porch were often cast on site in special forms to give them the appearance of chiseled stone. The porch, once closed in, has been restored to the original configuration as a welcoming open porch. It was built in 1928 for Mrs. M.B. Talley. Get to the June photo here, it's taken by Brian Bosch and features 1901 East Central Boulevard. In 1925, Robert Brown went to the train freight depot and picked up many boxes of materials and plans to build a home. He hauled them back to his lot, where he helped local laborers build his Sears mail order house. <laughs> Between 1908 and 1937, Sears and Roebuck and Company sold more than 100,000 houses by mail. These kits came complete with everything needed to construct the home, including the blueprints, top grade construction materials, and some of the plans suggested where a Sears sofa might fit, or maybe a Sears piano. <laughs> so Sears published over 450 home designs in various styles, including Colonial Revival, Tudor, and Bungalow. The Browns happened to choose the Sunbeam model and paid $2,425. This craftsman style bungalow had a large dormer projecting from the roof, and it was accented with typical wooden brackets. Robert Brown, who was an upholsterer, and his wife, Kate, resided here until 1971. Their daughter, Dorothy, bought the house in 1983 and lived there until 1994. This is the only documented Sears kit home in Orlando. People ask why? Well, we had all the stuff here. We didn't necessarily need it to be shipped in from Chicago. So what happened here is local materials were sourced, and a lot of the plan books, which were in such, so many of them were published, they were just built here by a local builder. Montgomery Ward was Sears' competitor at the time, and they had a kit model named the Orlando. The July photo was taken by Gail Peck and shows 500 South Eola Drive in the Lake Cherokee District. This two-story craftsman-style house was constructed in 1905 and was originally located on the Lake Lucerne at 227 North Lucerne Circle. It was mo moved um, in the early 1980s to save it from demolition. The broad front porch seen here was reconstructed after the move and replicates the original porch with large tapered columns, decorative brackets, and brick steps. The August photo was taken by Kevin Drennan and features 29 South Lasona. This is in the Lake Lasona district. Uh, this is a little bit different bungalow. It's a one-story mission revival bungalow and it was constructed in 1925. Of course, there's a lot of Spanish influence in the Mediterranean and Mission Revival buildings, and they were a popular style throughout Florida, and especially here in Orlando, during the 1920s and 30s. The, the style was adapted for a variety of buildings, including hotels, train stations, including ours, commercial structures, churches, and, and these small bungalows. The bungalow's porch is in the form of a small round portico supported by the rod iron columns, and they're set on a full-width tile uncovered terrace that is enclosed by the low stucco walls. 
The September photo was taken by Susan Stiller and shows 412 East Amelia Street. Built before 1925, it tip typifies the Florida vernacular architecture with bungalow features, common style within the Lake Eola Heights Historic District. This home has a graceful sloping metal roof with a projecting shed roof dormer with a triple set of nine paned windows featuring an unusual colorful stained glass. The full width front porch is supported by tapered wood columns on piers. The October photo was taken by Jennifer Moreau and shows 600 Dartmouth Street in the Lake Ivanhoe National Register District. This one and a half story bungalow was constructed in 1926 by contractor P.A. Horn. Owner W.A. Martin paid $5,500 for the residence and $500 for the garage. <laughs> the house maintains its original windows both on the ground and upper floor and the bungalow styling is emphasized by um, the overhanging gable roofs, the exposed rafter ends, and the uh, weatherboard exterior. <coughs> the photo for November was taken by David Billingsley and is of 538 North Summerlin Avenue. The Craftsman bungalow is a subtype of the bungalow architectural style. These were made popular by the many pattern books and popular magazines available at the time. The bungalow style became the most fashionable smaller house design in the country from 1905 until the late 1920s. Seen in this picture are typical craftsman style windows and trim. The decorative vent in the gable and the decorative cutout rafter tails are also identifying features of the bungalow style. In 1923, contractor Denham and Gowles built this one and a half story wood frame residence for Mr. J.R. Brown. The construction cost then was $4,000. The December photo was captured by Brian Bosch and features 1110 East Washington Street. This craftsman style bungalow built in 1920 sits within an intricate and polished landscape. A brick pathway leads to the steps at the corner of the full width porch. The steps are framed by uh, typical short tapered columns on cement piers and they support a hipped porch roof. Within the front porch are craftsman style windows and the house is a classic example of this style. Many of the homes featured in the 2016 calendar are protected throughout the city of Orlando's local historic district ordinance. These structures are reminders of the important role our historic structures have played in Orlando's past and the importance that they will play in the future. I want to thank all of the photographers who submitted their work and thank Heather Bonds, our recording secretary and planning tech for her research and writing work on this calendar. And I want to thank the Historic Preservation Board members and the members of the Publications Committee. I'm sure you noticed out in the entry there that there are con the, the boards showing all of the various photog photographs that were submitted for this uh, competition, and I'm pleased to say that the calendars will be available in the Rotunda of City Hall, the Orange County History Center, and Lou Gardens. And we will also have them here outside of the entrance today. So Mayor Dyer, would you please join me in um, handing out the our uh, wonderful what are they? They're, they're, they're great things. <laughs> all right. And if I could get mm -hmm. all the uh, contestants to come down, and we'll get, uh, get this done. And is the Vice President of McCoy Federal here today? Oh, yes.
Okay, our second presentation relates to American Diabetes Month, and I'm going to let Marcia uh, make the introductions. Marcia. Thank you, Mayor Dyer. Good afternoon, City Commissioners and uh, our guests who are here today. It is a pleasure to be here once again to talk about the importance of November as American Diabetes Month. And today we are fortunate to have with us some representatives of the American Diabetes Association who are here, led by the chairman of the American Diabetes Association's Community Leadership Board, um, Rob Denninger, I think I pronounced that right, Rob. Uh, Rob will speak briefly and just tell you about the importance of this month and how it makes a difference in our city and across our nation. Rob? Mayor Dyer, commissioners, invited guests, thank you for having us here today to recognize the American Diabetes Association and November as American Diabetes Month. As, as she mentioned, my name is Rob Dininger and I work at Florida Hospital as Vice President over Operations, but today I'm here as a volunteer representative as the chairman of the American Diabetes Association's Board of Central Florida. While the ADA is a widely recognized brand, I realize that there are still many people who are not familiar with the ADA, what the ADA does. The American Diabetes Association is the nation's leading nonprofit health organization, providing diabetes research, information, and advocacy for all types of diabetes. Founded in 1940, the association serves the community through the funding of publishing scientific findings, vital information, advocacy, summer camps, nutritional programming, and any other services for people with diabetes, their families, and the healthcare professionals. Our mission is to prevent and cure diabetes and to improve the lives of all people affected by diabetes. The ADA leads the fight against the deadly consequences of diabetes and the fight for those affected nationally, globally, and locally. We fund research to prevent, cure, and manage diabetes. In fact, there is over $1.5 million in Central Florida on research funding at the Sanford Burnham Prebis Medical Research Institute and the Florida Hospital Translational Research Institute. We also give a voice to those denied their rights because of diabetes. The ADA plays a vital role in protecting children and adults with diabetes while in school and in the workplace, including support by a staff and volunteer legal advocacy team. But why should we be talking about diabetes? Why is it such an important cause and discussion? Let me share some startling statistics with you. 29 million Americans, nearly 10% of the population have diabetes. That is staggering, but what's worse? In Florida, that rate is much higher, with nearly 14% of the population, or over 2.3 million Floridians having diabetes. And in case you wondered if Central Florida was exempt or somehow better, we have one community, our neighbor city of Eatville, where diabetes rates exceed 20%. Recent estimates project that as many as one in three American adults will have diabetes by 2050, unless something is done to stop diabetes. 21 million Americans have diagnosed diabetes, while another 8.1 million walk around every day with undiagnosed diabetes. 1.7 million Americans, aged 20 years or older, are newly diagnosed every 19 seconds. Think about that. In the roughly three minutes I'll be up here, at least 10 people will be told they have diabetes. What's even more worrisome is that 86 million Americans have prediabetes. That's one in three adults. Diabetes doubles the risk of heart attack and from death and from heart disease. In fact, the death overall is 50% higher for those with diabetes. So we can't afford not to be talking about diabetes. Diabetes costs the U.S. $245 billion every year from medical cost and lost wages. In Florida alone, we spent $19 billion last year on direct medical costs attributed to diabetes. One in 10 health care dollars is spent caring for treating diabetes and its complications. It's also costly for people who live with the disease. Medical expenditure among people with diabetes is more than two times higher than national rate. During November, the American Diabetes Association is driving conversation around good nutrition and healthy choices to prevent and manage diabetes. The ADA, as mentioned before, represents all types of diabetes. In fact, it doesn't matter whether you have type 1 or type 2, exercise can help. In this room, we have one young man with us who was diagnosed earlier this year, Luke Rosser, and he and his family would tell you that exercise has a key to saving his life so far. He's competing in triathlons at a young age and exercise has been one of his keys. As the ADA marks its 75th anniversary, 
We lead the conversation that helps those living with diabetes and those looking to live a healthier lifestyle achieve health and wellness every day. Everyone deserves to enjoy food that makes them feel happy, strong, and empowered. We thank you for making this an important topic of today's council meeting and hope that we can continue to spark change in this community in the fight against diabetes. I hope that you will join us in this very important cause to get the word out and support organizations like the American Diabetes Association as they play a vital role in our community. Thank you. Proclamation City of Orlando, whereas in the United States, nearly 30 million people, including 2.3 million in Florida, have diabetes, a serious disease with potentially life-threatening complications such as heart disease, stroke, blindness, kidney disease, and amputation, and whereas recent estimates project that as many as one in three American adults will have diabetes by 2050 if current trends continue, and whereas an increase in community awareness is necessary to put a stop to the diabetes epidemic, and whereas the City of Orlando supports the American Diabetes Association's efforts to prevent diabetes and fight this deadly disease through education and awareness. Now, therefore, I, Buddy Dyer, Mayor of the City of Orlando, hereby do proclaim November 2015 as American Diabetes Month in the City of Orlando. Okay, and Marcia has the last one as well, which is National Hunger and Homeless Awareness Day. Marcia? Yes, thank you, Mayor Dyer, commissioners, and guests. Uh, as you all may know, that each year we have been recognizing National Hunger and Homelessness Awareness Day, and this year is no exception. Uh, we're fortunate today to have one of the leaders in the effort, Brent Trotter, who is president and CEO of the Coalition for the Homeless of Central Florida, who will give you a brief overview of the significance of this national day of recognition. Brent? Well, good afternoon, Mayor, uh, commissioners. Thank you all for this uh, proclamation. As the largest provider of homeless services in Central Florida, we recognize that receiving this proclamation in many ways is symbolic of the many agencies and organizations who are in the trenches each day providing the necessary services and food for those who are in need and those who are most vulnerable in our community. On any given night, over 600 people find refuge at Coalition for the Homeless of Central Florida, engaging in comprehensive case managed programs, and one in four of those individuals are a child. I'd like to take a moment just to acknowledge today uh, Commissioner Robert Stewart, who is one of those who are in the trenches with us and is a critical partner in our efforts in combating homelessness and hunger. One in six of Central Florida Floridians suffer from food insecurity each and every day. Some counts say as many as 44,000 of our neighbors are homeless or precariously housed. And once again, we are partnering with our friends at the Orlando Magic on Wednesday night's game and pre-game events. So we'd like to invite all of you on Wednesday, November the 18th at 4 o'clock to join us at Harry Buffalo's on Church Street for a time of awareness where we will uh, go to the streets and uh, begin to make people aware of those in our community who are hungry and homeless. You're reminded if you uh, do join us to wear purple so that you will not be out of place or in other, other ways maybe uh, scorned. So anyone who is here would like to join us, we ask you to go to our website and register online. 
And in doing so, you'll get a free ticket to the Magic Game this Wednesday night, and they will be playing the uh, Minnesota Timberwolves. Again, Mayor, City Commissioners, thank you for this proclamation. City of Orlando Proclamation. Whereas hunger and homelessness are issues of great concern in the City of Orlando and throughout the United States, and whereas the City of Orlando and the Coalition for the Homeless of Central Florida have joined communities across the United States to bring greater understanding and awareness about the realities of hunger and homelessness, and whereas the Coalition provides food, shelter, and services to more than 600 men, women, and children on an average night, and whereas on November 18, 2015, lights around the City of Orlando will glow purple and the members of the Central Florida community are encouraged to wear purple to promote awareness of hunger and homelessness. Now, therefore, I, Buddy Dyer, Mayor of the City of Orlando, hereby do proclaim Wednesday, November 18th as National Hunger and Homeless Awareness Day in the City of Orlando. Okay, that brings us uh, right to the mayor's update. And I want to wish Commissioner Gray a happy belated birthday. He celebrated his birthday on November the 6th. I hope you had a very enjoyable day, Commissioner. And then I would like to wish Commissioner Stewart an early happy birthday. So we'll kind of average that out and be on the right day. His is November 27th. So Commissioner, I hope you have a great birthday. So you guys okay sharing a birthday song? Absolutely. Uh, <laughs> happy birthday to you. Happy, happy birthday, birthday to you. Happy birthday, Commissioner Gray and Stewart. <laughs> Happy birthday to you. Okay, this is our first meeting post-election, so I would like to congratulate Commissioner Ortiz, Commissioner Sheehan, and Commissioner Ings on their re-election, and I look forward to working with uh, the entire council for the next four years as we advance our city as the best city in America to work and play. Okay, on Friday, we joined city commissioners, OUC, Habitat for Humanity, and the residents at Butler's Preserve to launch our city's One Person, One Tree initiative. It was a well-attended event. All the commissioners that were there helped to plant a tree, and there just happened to be a very hard clay layer about eight inches down. That everybody ended up doing some uh, pretty hard shoveling to get through that layer of clay, but the trees were planted, and we want to increase uh, Orlando's urban tree canopy. It's a great partnership with the Urban Day Foundation, OUC, and the cool thing is you can order a tree online at city or one person one tree dot com and we will send you a tree in the mail so we want to increase our tree canopy from 25 percent to 40 percent and make orlando a cooler place to live um, and don't expect a eight foot tree in the mail it's <laughs> probably going to be more like eight inches so, but it will grow to be big and strong and mighty and look just like the century tree over here in 150 years or so so this Thursday, November 19th, anybody know what that is? One year anniversary of our newly reconstructed Orlando Citrus Bowl, the day it reopened, and it has been quite a year. Uh, this year we will have hosted 
818,645 patrons at 93 different events. We started with the Florida Blue Florida Classic. We then had the Russell Athletic Bowl, the Buffalo Wild Wings Citrus Bowl, Monster Jam, Orlando City Soccer's first MLS season, 62,000 of those 800,000 were in the stadium that very day. We hosted Mexico versus Costa Rica, a um, return of the U.S. women's team against Brazil, and let's not forget, we also had the world's greatest rock and roll band, the Rolling Stones, who played to sold out crowd on the 12th and this week we are actively transitioning the stadium from soccer back to american football uh, and we will have the florida blue florida classic this weekend an event that we all enjoy and is the largest african-american collegiate sporting event in the entire country that's pretty cool that we have that here in orlando saturday november 28th is small business saturday and i encourage you to skip all those long lines on black friday and shop locally commissioner stewart and i will be actively walking along edge rider drive and buying all of our christmas presents right there locally so i would encourage you to visit our main streets in downtown on small business saturday and although we have not yet celebrated Thanksgiving, I want to announce that we'll be lighting our Christmas tree on Friday, December 5th, which is after Thanksgiving at 5 o'clock. Well, the event will be between 5 and 10, and our 72-foot Christmas tree we be decorated with 88,000 LED lights and we will have the encore cast performing arts the dailycity.com food truck bazaar and trinity lutheran schools holiday musical uh, on the agenda i have two things that i would like to call out and one is meba funding for nikki's place um, on today's agenda we have a meba grant to upgrade and restore nikki's place which is one of our community's best known soul food restaurants which unfortunately had a fire early last this year um, that destroyed most of the building they're rebuilding it and we're helping them fund some of those improvements and Nikki's place and a, a number of the other new Paramore businesses which number 25 now new businesses in Paramore of the last year will kick off a year-long campaign promoting those businesses called discover more and Paramore and will highlight the cultural entertainment offerings, home style cooking and history of Paramore and raise awareness to those offerings. The other item I would like to um, point out is our homeless assistance. As you know, we've been implementing our na a national model called Housing First and that brings, um, well, it's been successful in Phoenix and Houston and Salt Lake City, Miami and we're changing our approach to housing homeless uh, chronically homeless individuals we're putting them in permanent supportive housing that sur surrounds them with services such as mental health counseling treatment for addiction all the way to skills simply to manage your household um, it provides a very coordinated effort between the existing service providers and it is a model that i believe will allow us to go forward in a extremely successful way in managing our homeless population on today's agenda we're committing to more than 1.2 million dollars as part of the funding plan and while our region is drawing more federal dollars down than ever before as a result of our commitment to this approach the federal funding won't cover all of our costs so it's important that all of our local government in central florida step up i'd like to call on Lori. Harris with CSH to update us on our efforts. Lori. Thank you, Mayor Dyer. Thank you, commissioners and guests. I'd like to take this moment to share my enthusiasm in being present for this pivotal moment for the city of Orlando. Each of the commissioners and Mayor Dyer have dedicated time, energy, and focus on researching, studying, and exploring data-driven results from the cities across the nation that Mayor Dyer spoke of, who have provided sound solutions to the issues of homelessness. While others may have surrendered to the thinking that homelessness is too complex of an issue, that we'll just have to cope with homelessness, the city's leadership has said that they chose not to just cope with the homelessness, but now will invest into a proven solution. This solution means that anyone who does experience homelessness that is brief, temporary, and once they are identified, they are on a path to
to housing. The philosophy of housing first and permanent supportive housing through a number of research studies have demonstrated the positive effect that supportive housing has on residential stability among formerly homeless individuals. Approximately 80% who have entered supportive housing are still housed after one year. In addition, many of those who leave supportive housing do so for positive reasons, often to enter more independent settings after they have been stabilized. Your actions today, commissioners, Mayor Dyer, the city of Orlando, are a bold statement to the region, to the state, and to the country that the city of Orlando is taking a leading role in solving chronic homelessness. This audacious action also states that the most vulnerable population in our city will not be forgotten, that we will be determined to be another city who will be able to share our own data-driven success. You are taking this city to where it has never been before, where it has never imagined being, on the road to ending chronic homelessness. I celebrate this moment with each of you. Thank you, Commissioners and Mayor Dyer, for your vision, your leadership, and your boldness. Thank you, Lori. All right, that brings us to the consent agenda, and the consent agenda are a number of items that are acted upon through a single vote of council. We give each of our council members an opportunity to comment on items from the consent agenda as well as uh, generally update you on important happenings within their districts. We rotate the order we do that, and today we begin with District 6, Commissioner Rings. Thank you, Mayor Dyer. <clears throat> and Mayor, congratulations to you on your reelection to mayor of Thank Orlando. You, it was a great run for you. And obviously the citizens of Orlando spoke overwhelmingly, overwhelmingly for you. So at 62%, it's a great job well done. 63? Okay, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm sorry. Round it up, round it up. Um, also too, uh, I'd like to say congratulations to Nick and Elaine Aikens on your uh, success with Nikki's Place, and we know that it's going to be a great opportunity uh, for all of us within the city, because you know I, I do tip in the District 5 to stop by Nick, Nikki's Place often. Uh, great eating place, so thank you so much. And then also businessman and developer Abdul Mathen, uh, thank you, sir, for your uh, dedication and your uh, uh, interest in developing a five-star hotel here in Orlando and specifically in the heart of District 6 at uh, Kirkman and International Drive. So we wish you well as well. I'd like to uh, pause just to extend my sincere condolences to the families of the victims who lost their lives and to those who sustained injuries as a result of the tragic violence and shootings in Paris, France. Uh, my prayers are with you and with your country. Um, and Mayor, you said it earlier, and it really boils down, boils down to this, and that is here in America, we ha all have a part to play in making sure that our country is safe. We all have a part. So let's just remain vigilant watchful and stay in touch with our police department and that's how we build relationships with them rather than become adversaries with our police department we have to build relationships and uh, chief mina you guys are out there on the forefront and uh, we thank you and my hats off to you as well and then uh, ed if you would show the uh, pictures in reference to the sunrail field trip that uh, we took uh, we being the seniors from the Claudia Allen Senior Center on Wednesday, October 8th, uh, the District 6 seniors uh, took their Sunrail field trip from Sand Lake Road uh, Station to the Winter Park Station. And when we were there at Winter Park waiting for the uh, southbound train, um, we had some little snacks in the park for the seniors. So they were very pleased and happy uh, concerning this field trip. Uh, lots of smiling faces. As a matter of fact, even today, they're still talking about the uh, train ride, and they are ready to go again. 
uh, for this train ride. Um, our seniors are very important to us and specifically those of us that are in District 6 and we do show our support and love for them and um, we just celebrated again our Thanksgiving uh, luncheon for the seniors at the El Claudia Allen Center so we continue to do all that we can to help and be a part of our seniors lives because they are the foundations and and I tell them they are the ones that help raise me and because of their dedication this is Miss Ronita Sanders who works for Congresswoman Corrine Brown this is her mother uh, and she's been involved in our school system. She was a, a, a cook there at uh, one of the local elementary schools. And uh, so many of the seniors are just, were just very pleased with that. And then even at the Thanksgiving luncheon, and that's my father there with the little hat on. As a matter of fact, um, he celebrated his birthday on November the 13th, uh, celebrating 82 years. And uh, so we're very happy, happy for him. Uh, he did suffer a stroke uh, just after he retired from the Orlando Police Department, and he spent 25 years with the Orlando Police Department. But uh, he's still hanging in there <coughs> tough. And again, all of our seniors at the field trip. So, Ed, are we still going on? Or? Hey, Mayor, you noticed that red tie, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs> just just check it. <laughs> Thank you so much, Ed. And then also on Saturday, November, th November the 7th, the Stop the Violence Community Walk and celebration was held. Uh, the walk started from the Frontline Outreach Center and ended up at Dr. I. Sylvester Hankins Park. Uh, it was a great turnout. Uh, several speakers were there on hand to share their testimonials re regarding the uh, violence. And I'd like to thank you personally, Chief uh, John Mina, and also the Orlando Police Department for your help and support with that. And specifically, Chief, uh, your Sergeant Deborah Thomas. She did a great job with this uh, program. She actually brought it to me, and I got behind her with that. So. Please keep up the great works with her because she is trying to, to sew together that community, the relationships between our community and, and the police. And then some upcoming events that I have is on Friday, uh, November 27th, uh, I will be having my uh, sixth annual district, sixth annual seniors Thanksgiving concert. Remember I talked about those seniors. And I tell you, this concert is going to be held at El Bethel Temple of Orlando at 3000 Bruton Boulevard. Uh, Bishop Edward Thomas Sr. is the pastor there. Uh, we're going to feature uh, the artist Miss Dorothy Norwood and also Patrick Lundy and the Ministers of Music. And we'll have a couple of local artists as well with local artist Gwen Covington. And so we're looking for a great time for our seniors. This is a night of celebration and thanksgiving for them for all that they do for us. And this will be the day after Thanksgiving. And then as we come up on December the 12th, uh, this will be the District 6 Annual Washington Shores Christmas Parade and celebration that will be held at uh, Hankins Park. We'll start off at Dr. James R. Smith Center and uh, we'll travel uh, on Columbia Street uh, north and east on, uh, we'll travel on Bruton Boulevard north and then east on Columbia Street into Hankins Park. So we're looking for some fantastic times there and especially for our young people because we really open up our gifts for them and also for our seniors. So thank you, Mayor, and that's all that I have. Thank you, Commissioner. Commissioner uh, Gray. Thank you, Mayor, very much. And I do want to uh, give my congratulations to you and my three commissioners for your reelection. Well done. Uh, given the size of the agenda, I think I will pass on my comments. Thank you. Commissioner Ortiz. Give me a second to catch up here. Congratulations, Mayor, Commissioner Sheehan, and Commissioner Ings. Your reelection. Awesome job. I'd like to start by expressing my deepest, deep condolences to. Mrs. Rita and 
Cyberstone and her family. They lost uh, Mr. Dale uh, Cyberstone to a very tragic accident at the Dover Shore community, Dover State community, um, a few days ago. Um, Chief, uh, later on, I'd like to meet with you to see if we can develop some logistics in terms of how we sometimes redirect traffic. I guess one of the uh, people driving around the neighborhood took on this gentleman while he was working uh, the yard or something like that. So. Anyhow, um, so my condolences and my prayers are with this family. Last Saturday, the Veterans Parade, a total success. Mayor, the staff, the uh, Veterans Council, they did an awesome, awesome job. Commissioners, uh, I think everybody enjoyed this particular parade. It was awesome. It was really, really packed. So, so uh, it's probably one of the best parades I've ever seen. So congratulations. A reminder to District 2 Neighborhood Leaders Council members, uh, our meeting will be this Thursday, and we will be meeting at the Englewood Neighborhood Center at 6.30 p.m. Additionally, I'd like to invite all of the uh, first community, everybody, to the first community uh, arts and craft festival on Saturday, December 5th at Park of the Americas. It's our first arts and craft festival, and it's going to start at 11 o'clock. I believe it's going to last until about 3 or 4 o'clock in the afternoon. So everybody is invited. I'd like to congratulate Orlando Fire Assistant Chief and Evil Size and OPD Lieutenant uh, Cherry Size uh, for their son, Jordan Matthew Size, for getting uh, his Eagle Scout Award. His project was in our district, and we're very proud of him. As a matter of fact, many of us participated in that particular project, so congratulations, Matthew. I'd like to take this opp opportunity also to wish everybody, everybody in our city, a very safe and happy Thanksgiving. Please be safe. And ladies, when you go out there to the shopping centers, don't take those big purses. Just take a little wallet. All right? Bad guys are still out there and so on. But be safe. Be safe. Thank you, Mayor. That's all I have. Thank you, Commissioner. We'll move to District 3. Commissioner Stewart. Thank you, Mayor. And let me also express um, condolences to those affected uh, by uh, the attacks in Paris. Um, I see that uh, the um, French consulate, the um, uh, Brigitte, is doing some things coming up this week, and I encourage all of us to, to take a moment uh, and participate in that. Let me also say congratulations to uh, our returning commissioners and mayor to you. Uh, let me take a little sidebar and say a special, con special thanks to uh, our city clerk who chaired our canvassing board, Celeste Brown. Um, and Regina Hill, who served together on that. Thank you very much. It was a, uh, an honor to serve with you. I also want to say a special thanks to Amy Anako and Beth Davidson and Deanna Little and, uh, and also Bill Cowell's staff over at Supervisor of Elections. I thought it went very smooth. Um, and uh, I appreciate the work that y'all did and appreciate your leadership uh, in that. So thank you very much. It's an honor to work with you. Uh, Veterans Day Parade was wonderful. I had an opportunity to uh, have in, the, in our vehicle Lieutenant Colonel Doug Channing, who is uh, a war hero uh, from World War II, flew in World War II, uh, Vietnam, and also uh, uh, Korea. Um, and uh, um, so it's an honor to be with him. And, of course, Tommy Tart drove. And you know how Tommy Tart is. You <laughs> can't get him to be He's quiet. <laughs> But we also had with us, uh, who walked with us, was all, the second year, is the, the youth from the Rosemont Community Center. And it was really neat to be able to have them and be um, with this war hero and have them get a chance to enjoy Veterans Day and about what it means to all of us. I also got a chance to serve, uh, be over at the uh, Veterans Day pro program at Lake Highland Preparatory. I don't normally mention this, except that it is the last one for Warren Hudson, who's retiring as the um, director of Lake Highland and the president of Lake Highland Prep. So it was a wonderful um, um, program, but also very sentimental and reminded us of the work that he's done over the past 15 years there. Uh, Brit Week has uh, completed last week. We've had a chance to be part of that, and it's been uh, had a chance to attend three or four of their events. But it's really been neat to see the relationship that we have in this local community uh, with uh, Great Britain and, uh, and our English counterparts. It's been wonderful to see 
how we have meld much of what we're doing in terms of uh, uh, development, economic development, uh, and the work that we're doing here locally. There's more than 3,000 uh, businesses that have some type of effect uh, in uh, working with the Great Britain or working directly there. We have a wonderful Great Britain or a, um, a British uh, Chamber of Commerce. Uh, it's just really been neat to do that. We kicked it off with a, a neat um, event over at uh, the um, uh, Orlando Museum of Art, and I would encourage those who get a chance to go to it. There's a new art collection over there that is the first time it's being seen in the country. Uh, it's by Bob Bonis, B-O-N-I-S. Bob is a, a ro former road manager for the Rolling Stones and the Beatles while they were here for four years and had his personal camera and decided he was going to take pictures and without, those pictures were, were uh, presented and discovered, I guess you want to call that, by his son uh, a few years ago and they are now kind of the home pictures of uh, the Beatles and Rolling Stones while they were here in the United States. So that was the first time the chance to see those photos. And it's really a neat kind of exhibit. Um, and so if you get a chance to get over there, please get over there and see those. Uh, some other quick updates. Um, please join me on uh, Saturday, September 21st at Ivanhoe Village's Jingle Eve uh, event taking place at Orange Avenue in Virginia and Gaston Edwards Park. That evening we'll be uh, lighting again the Happy Holidays light over the old OUC building. Uh, if there's anything um, positive about taking down a bunch of those trees and replanting them along Edgewater, I mean, along uh, Ivanhoe, you now get a chance to see that building for the next couple of years. And so get a chance to enjoy that as you enter into, um, uh, into downtown Orlando. And as a reminder, uh, commissioners, thank you for what y'all have done this, a few years ago. This is a continue, continue, continuation of that legacy. So thank you for what y'all have done. Um, another great event is Holiday on the Drive coming up. It's on Thursday, December 3rd at 5 p.m. along Edgewater Drive. A great successful shopping event to kick off the shopping holiday in College Park. Lou Gardens will be decked out for the holidays. Come by and enjoy the decorations at Lou, Lou House um, from November 16th through January 4th. Uh, and, of course, a movie date night will be National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation, which will be a lot of fun for all of us. And on November 22nd, the Orlando Museum of Arts Art Festival of Trees um, will be completed. Uh, so get a chance this week to go see that. And then, as the mayor had mentioned, Saturday, November 28th is Small Business Saturday. So please join us in our Main Street districts to get a chance to, to, uh, to, to uh, help shop out and remember how important small businesses are. Um, I haven't got much on the agenda, except I, I do want to remind the council that we are going to postpone any um, action on D, I'm sorry, C23 uh, on the grills. Uh, it was the applicant had asked us to move that back uh, a couple of weeks, so we'll move that to the second meeting in December and get a chance to finalize that. I want to make sure we move that forward as um, as quickly as we can, but it also this was a delay that was asked for by the, uh, the applicant itself, and we thought we would give him that benefit of that doubt. And I also want to say thank you to um, all those involved in the historic preservation calendar. It was really great. Thank you for that presentation. Um, I love, do, love having these, love passing them out in the neighborhoods, and love getting a chance to brag on you and your work uh, and, and the work of our entire committee. So thank you very much uh, for doing that. And that's all that I have, Mayor. Thank you, Commissioner. We'll move on to Commissioner Sheehan. Uh, thank you, Mayor, and uh, I also would like to, uh, to send condolences and prayers to France, and uh, the French motto is Egalité, Liberté, Fraternité, which is Equality, Liberty, and Brotherhood. And uh, I think we need to concentrate a lot more on the victims and stop publicizing the rantings of these lunatics who are nothing but mass murderers. It's not terror. It's, not, it's nothing but mass murder, and I, I think it's a shame that they've been glorified so much, um, and we need to just stop glorifying them because they're just murderers and there's no need for, there's, not, there's nothing noble in what they're doing. Um, on the agenda today, um, I'd like to, on B-17, I'm glad that we are renewing the red light cameras on a five-year extension. Um, the safety improvements at intersections, we have a 30% reduction in side, in bone, side impact crashes and T-bone crashes, which are the most dangerous, and I think that's noble. I know it's been said that uh, this is a money grab. It's not. This is a safety issue, and I'm glad to see that we're going to continue with our red light cameras. On item C1, the Southgate property, I'm glad to see that we're going to be moving forward on this, going to be doing a lot of um, improvements on that South Orange corridor, and this is another redevelopment that will do that. 
Um, and just a couple things from my district I want to thank. Again, I want to thank Richard for that delight, delightful historic preservation um, presentation because, again, these are gems in our community. I'm glad that we're celebrating these bungalows throughout our historic neighborhoods. I want to thank the volunteers for the Swan Roundup over the weekend. We had we rounded them all up, gave them the veterinary shots, and they're uh, they're a little bit lighter though. That's probably good because people aren't feeding them as much bread. But still, we need people to stop feeding them bread because we did have some animals that actually had bacterial infections. And again, if you give them bread, you are hurting them. It's actually bad for them and actually causes them to get bacterial infections. It changes the pH in the water and. I'd love to be able to pick up those swans and give them their veterinary care and not have them have that, those darn pink feathers and having those health problems because people are feeding them the wrong thing and not feeding them. They should be fed lettuce and things like that. And Publix will actually give you lettuce if you go in there, it, it, the Publix at Paramount, if you don't feed them bread. So please, please, please stop feeding them bread. And I'm sorry I missed Veterans Day. I did have to go to a funeral in St. Augustine. I know it was a, very, it was a great event, but I, I did have a close friend die and I needed to go to St. Augustine. Um, for that and uh, I also want to thank the District 4 residents for the opportunity to continue to serve you. Congratulations uh, Mayor Dyer, Commissioner Ings and uh, Commissioner Ortiz and it just kind of proves that when you take the high road there's a lot less traffic up there. <laughs> <laughs> so congratulations and thank you. Thank you Commissioner and we will now move to Commissioner Hill. Thank you Mayor. Uh, again congratulations to Mayor Dyer, Commissioner Sheehan, Ings and Ortiz, I am uh, honored to continue to work with you as we uh, continue to uh, uh, see Orlando be the great city uh, that it is, and as you said, Mayor, uh, throughout the nation. I'd like to say a special hello. I see uh, one of our community leaders out there in the galley. Uh, hello, Pastor Gray. Uh, good to see you. <coughs> Uh, on the CRA 4 that we'll be approving today, uh, funding for Nikki's Place, I'm elated, elated, elated that we're uh, 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 to be able to assist you. Uh, not only is it the, one of the best soul food restaurants, I'm biased, it is, okay, mm -hmm. <laughs> in uh, Orlando, but not only is it a soul food restaurant, what they do has provided real meals to some of our less fortunate seniors, many don't know, where they give out free meals to, uh, there's a complex next door that has almost 100 uh, seniors there. And if they run out of monies and can't buy groceries, uh, Nikki's Place uh, feed them. So, so it's not just a restaurant, uh, uh, it's uh, I, I would say a, a place where people that are down and out can come and know they can get a hot meal. So thank you for your service. This is a great investment. Um, this is in your uh, district, Commissioner uh, Sheehan, but I'm glad to see uh, the CDBG uh, funding for the Lighthouse. Uh, I've gone over there and toured, and it's an outstanding group of people there that are assisting uh, those that are uh, disabled because uh, they told me they're not blind even though technically mm -hmm. we call them blind, they're just disabled because they are able to uh, uh, do so many things and this give them value, this uh, location here uh, to where they're self-sufficient. Um, and I always say the best social program that we can have is a job. Mm -hmm. I like to uh, also thank council and mayor with your leadership with the funding of the Coalition for the Homeless and it's only 25 men, but that's 25 men that we're empowering uh, uh, to now become self-sufficient. And that's through counseling and, and recovery meetings and life skills and job skills and education, uh, uh, substance abuse programs there with this funding. Even though we, we uh, have committed thousands and hundreds of thousands to the coalition, Mr. Trotter's doing an outstanding job and staff over there. Uh, we can't do enough for those that are homeless in our city. And I'm glad that we're taking the lead throughout the nation and uh, partnering, uh, going out. I've gone out to see other uh, places in the nation that is supporting supportive housing, and it works, and it works. And I'm glad that uh, here soon that we'll be having housing in my district to assist those become self-sufficient again. 
On November 7th, uh, my Youth Advisory Board, uh, which is the District 5 Youth Advisory Board, and it's uh, probably about 30 kids there in District 5 uh, that I've brought in, and now they've been exposed to city government. They put on events. They go to senior complexes and help the seniors. But on last sat well, last Saturday, they were able to put a science fair. Most of them uh, go to Orlando Science School, so they're STEM students. And what I have them doing is doing peer mentoring and exposing other youth in District 5 there in the West Side to uh, uh, STEM uh, uh, programs. So they had a STEM fair, and we had about 60 youth that came out. Because I know if uh, this is uh, uh, what the jobs are for, for the future, and if my children are left behind when it comes to STEM, um, I won't say that they're hopeless, but they won't have a, a, a fair opportunity. So I'm uh, working with other organizations to expose uh, the kids over at the Northwest and Ivy Lane uh, to STEM programs. On November 9th, uh, I'd like to say thank you to Steinway Piano. Uh, they're over at the Callahan Park uh, Community Center and they have uh, a piano program. And they had their first uh, piano recital for the year. And the, it was about 60 kids that participated in those, that program. And they have about 12 pianos there. And they gave one little girl that is just amazing a piano to take home uh, for her to practice. And it shows. So uh, thank you, Steinway, for exposing kids in the Paramount area to arts. I'd like to thank Michelle Brennan, Susan Harris, and Cindy Light. Um, on November 10th, we went over to Vista Lago. It's a community there in uh, the Carver Shores District 5 area. And for many, many years, they had a dysfunctioning HOA. And there, they, we had our first board meeting after many, many years and appointed a president, a treasurer, and a secretary. And Thank you. You've given that community hope again you're, uh, for assisting me uh, reform that HOA. And we still got a lot of work to do, but I'm encouraged. Um, I'd like to thank VTOS on November 11th um, for their leadership over in District 5. They held a, um, that was Veterans Day, and they held a, a veteran memorial there at Majestic Life Church. I was able to. Uh, participate along with Commissioner Ings there in your district uh, at the C.R. Smith Center with the AKs, which uh, provided about 200 uh, hot meals to the seniors. Uh, about 300. About 300 uh, there at the C.R. Smith Center. So thank you uh, for looking out for our seniors. And i also like to thank uh, Kicking the Streets. It's a, a, a nonprofit that goes out and deliver um, all my information and flyers for events. I uh, partnered with them with many other partners here in the community uh, on November 11th. And we uh, provided hot meals and also gave out um, uh, care packages of food to 125 seniors there at the Salvation Army Booth Towers. Because many a times I found out at the end of the month our seniors go to bed hungry. Uh, so, um, so we were able, with the assistance from uh, Scott George over at Community Food Bank on Michigan, I think it's in your My district, district. Uh -huh. they partnered with me and provided those uh, rations for our seniors. And that's about it. It was a great parade. Uh, Commissioner Stewart, I had my kids from the Northwest Center and Paramore Kids Zone there um, and I, they were all dressed in red and I thought your kids were mine. <laughs> I was like, where did they come from? I haven't seen those faces. But I found out later after the parade that they were your kids over at Rosemont and they all blended in well and it is uh, exposing our children to, uh, 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 to be patriotic is, is amazing and for them to see uh, like, for instance, uh, uh, Chief Mina and other uniform uh, heroes in uniform, they can aspire to be one of them when they see this, these things. Um, and that was it.
Thank you, sir. Thank you, Commissioner. We have deferred item C-23, as Commissioner Stewart has noted. Uh, is there a motion on the remainder of the consent agenda? So moved. Motion by Commissioner Hill, second by Commissioner Stewart. All in favor of the motion indicate so by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, and so the motion yeah. carries. We'll take a two-minute recess while anybody that was only here for the consent agenda that wants to leave our chambers can do so. Where did he go? <laughs> you actually had a good comeback for once. You had a good line. For once. You had a good line. Okay, let's uh, reconvene the CRA. See, the first three items on the CRA meeting are meeting minutes. So, is there a motion to accept the CRA Advisory Board meeting minutes from August the 26th? So moved. Second. second. Motion by Commissioner Sheehan, second by Commissioner Stewart. All in favor of the motion indicate so by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, motion carries. Uh, number two is the CRA meeting minutes, September 21st. So moved. So moved. Oh, motion second. by Commissioner Stewart, second by Commissioner Sheehan. All in favor of the motion indicate so by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, motion carries. And then number three is CRA minutes, October 5th. So moved. Second. Motion by Commissioner Stewart, second by Commissioner Sheehan. All in favor of the motion indicate by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, motion carries. All right, number four. Thomas. Thank you, Mayor, and good afternoon, Mayor. And Commissioners, item number four is the aforementioned MEBA funding agreement with uh, Nikki's Place. As always, I'd like to give you a little background. There is a MEBA advisory board that you approved to be made up of seven, seven members, uh, one member each from three of the um, uh, economic development organizations, two members from the CRA staff, including the Director of Urban Development, who chairs the MEBA board, and then one member each from the Economic Development Department, as well as the City of Orlando's Business and Financial Services Department. That, that advisory board, prior to uh, any applications come to you, completely uh, reviews very comprehensive of each and every application, including business plans, financial projections, um, a detailed description of the expenditures, proof of uh, investment, as well as a criminal background check. 
as you see there is a, a, a listing of the 15 businesses who since its 2006 inception have received uh, MEBA awards. Number six is Nikki's Place, who previously received uh, an initial um, MEBA award back in 2008, I believe, and uh, who successfully completed the program. And the program uh, policies do uh, allow for any successful, uh, after a successful completion of the first uh, deferred loan, um, the applicant can apply for a second. So Nikki's Place is doing that uh, today. The uh, MEBA program, was, again, was approved in 2006, uh, updated in 2010. The intent of the program is to focus on small business retention and creation in the Param Paramore area and allows, of course, up to $40,000 for um, qualified um, purposes, including business retention, relocation, capital equipment, uh, marketing, and startup expenses, to name a few. Uh, as, uh, again, as was mentioned earlier by, by several, today's uh, application is Nikki's Place, a very well-known institution uh, and restaurant um, in this community. They've been at 742 Carter Street uh, for their 16-year existence. Um, they did have a fire uh, six months or so ago. I do want to point out that the, uh, the MEBA funding requ uh, requested in this application does not pertain to equipment or anything that was damaged by that fire. They did have sustained smoke and water damage in downstairs. That's been addressed through um, um, the appropriate insurance policy with Lords of London. Um, and this is for additional equipment, equipment and, and capital improvements that we'll discuss in detail in a minute. As has been talked about, uh, uh, our famous, the famous owners of, of Nick's Place, Chef Nick and, and, and Miss Elaine, as I like to call them, uh, a wealth of experience, uh, as you can see over the years, uh, with Chef Nick being certified in food as well as kitchen management and food preparation. Uh, and uh, Miss Elaine having a bachelor's and a master's of science education degree and being certified as a safe, uh, serve safe food protection manager. They have nine uh, staff, three um, full time and six part time, and they, they expect to add to that staff uh, in the future. Nickus has, has realized a 35% increase in business over the last several years after switching from traditional media to social media, which of course is, is much more uh, efficient for them. And we think that's been a great switch by them. We applaud them. Uh, for those those efforts. I can tell you from, and I have full disclosure, I am a frequent customer of Nikki's Place. I can tell you I've seen people <laughs> sit in Nikki's Place and discuss how they're coming through town and that whenever they come through town, they make it part of their routine to stop at this, this great uh, uh, institution of, of Southern cuisine. There are some uh, competitors for Nikki's Place uh, which have to be considered uh, within a five mile radius. Those are Ole's Kitchen and Barbecue, Chef Eddie's, which of course is is uh, just on West Church Street and the Soul Food Kitchen, which is uh, off of Orange Center Boulevard. Uh, the financial data uh, sales at last year in 2014 exceeded $380,000. Uh, and while the, um, the uh, operating uh, or the gross profit margin was well within industry standards, we are concerned about the net income from operations, which is only $4,665. And we're working with them to improve that net income amount. There are some reasons for that. If you look at the revenues, uh, revenues and profits explained, uh, some of the, um, the reason for the net income being as low as it was is because they have excessive repairs and maintenance costs associated with obsolete equipment, uh, equipment that is oftentimes in disrepair, old and antiquated, and they look to replace that equipment with uh, this deferred loan. Um, they also use um, a lot of uh, short-term debt uh, based on credit cards, which of course has higher than usual uh, interest rates, and, but the, to their credit, they like to uh, address that in a very aggressive way, but that again takes away from the, the, uh, uh, the cash flow. And um, after looking at the menu, uh, the owners as well as staff has, has, um, uh, in, has recognized that there are some uh, opportunities to raise some of the prices on the menu that would increase the bottom line as well. And the final one, utilities, the new uh, the utility bill should go down, um, not significantly, but will, it should go down with the advent of uh, more uh, energy efficient uh, equipment. As you see, the financial projections put together um, start uh, very realistically at a 5% per year increase starting with last year's 380. So the year, year one here is projected at 400,000 and again with 5% increase increases going up. And if you look at the bottom line, it's considerably better than what their present $4,700 bottom line uh, is or f was for 2014. And again, that's because of upgrade of equipment as well as some other efficiencies that they uh, intend to, to, um, to have. 
Uh, the, the funding request is for a little over $25,500. It's broken down almost equally between capital equipment and capital improvement costs. The marketing assistance costs, uh, per the MEBA bo advisory board, uh, that, that marketing will come out of the 10% uh, equity um, that the owners will put into um, the project. Our consultant observations and recommendations include uh, again, the fact that the profit margins could be improved through an increase of some of the costs on certain menu items. Um, and down at the bottom, uh, it was mentioned earlier that, they, uh, that, that Nikki's uh, gives food away to certain needy individuals. And uh, one of the recommendations is that a log of costs from their bimonthly food do donations should be maintained to better track the financial impact that those donations are actually having on their business. But we applaud them, of course, for those, those efforts. The funding agreement, uh, conditions to the funding agreement um, include uh, a design action plan or a DAP plan, which is basically a plan before they can receive any payouts, which uh, indicates to us precisely how they intend to implement all of the conditions of the agreement. So once they've assigned and, and see what those conditions are, they come back with a plan that shows just how they will uh, achieve that. Um, it says conditions also include them remaining in business Nikki's place uh, for at least three years. Uh, in order to qualify for this deferred loan, which then becomes a grant, um, and being open um, a minimum amount of time, which is no problem. They already exceed that. Uh, and uh, basically having downtown Orlando logos and um, uh, good signage. Signage has to comply with all the sign regulations and be approved by the Appearance Review Board. Uh, and as we said, in an effort to uh, help um, the owners improve on the net profits, uh, the grantee shall continue to exceed uh, technical assistance from an economic development organization uh, that's approved by the CRA uh, and we will advise them along those lines. And again, unless there are any questions, Mayor and Commissioners, uh, the action needed, of course, um, and this is based on the recommendation of both the MEBA Advisory Board as well as the um, CRA Advisory Board, approval of the MEBA Funding and Security Agreement between the Community Redevelopment Agency and Nikki's Place, Inc and authorization for the chairman and the executive director of the CRA to execute the agreement subject to the review and approval of the city attorney's office. Moved up. Second. Motion by Commissioner Hill, second by Commissioner Sheehan. Were there questions, comments? Hearing none, all in favor of the motion indicate so by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries. When are you guys going to be open? <laughs> Fantastic. Thank you all. <laughs> all right, Thomas, number five. All right, number five, Mayor and Commissioners, this is a downtown relocation assistance program and implementation agreement. This is a companion item to B16, which you just approved on the consent agenda, um, with the difference is that it pertains, of course, to only to chronically homeless that are located or reside within the CRA area. Um, the term of this agreement is five years at $500,000 per year with a not to exceed of $2.5 million. And I point out to you that $1 million of that $2.5 million has already been approved in the prior two years' annual budgets um, that, uh, that you have approved. Uh, so the, um, the program, of course, will be used to pay for um, rental assistance and utilities. The CRA, CRA Advisory Board has recommended approval. And again, unless there, there are questions, Mayor, staff, uh, is requesting the CRA approve the Downtown Relocation Assistance Program policies and procedures and the Downtown Relocation Assistance Program Implementation Agreement subject to review and approval by the City Attorney's Office and authorization for the Chairman and the Executive Director to execute that agreement. So motion to approve. Move to approve. Second. So, motion by Commissioner Hill, second by Commissioner Sheehan. I'll pay the motion to indicate so by saying aye. Aye. Uh, aye. Those opposed, motion carries. And number six, Thomas. Thank you, Mayor. Number six is a downtown facade and building stabilization program funding agreement between the CRA and Pine Street Buildings LLC for 69 East Pine Street. Uh, again, your attention to your screens. Um, uh, funding for facades or stabilization improvements uh, can be made uh, within the area uh, or, or encourage, uh, they actually encourage the reuse, reuse of vacant and underutilized buildings and improves the appearance of buildings within uh, the downtown area. Um, this is a commercial building, therefore, the, uh, uh, it, which is in the Central Business District, therefore, it qualifies for up to $20,000 or 50% of uh, the 
qualifying costs. The applicant is Pine Street Buildings LLC, uh, owns a building at 69 East Pine. That's actually the northwest quadrant of the intersection of Magnolia and Pine. This is the building. You'll be very familiar with that building. And um, the qualified cost of facades, facade improvements uh, is just under $20,000. So at the 50%, um, not to exceed $20,000, uh, the applicant is actually requesting $9,887. Uh, from the program. I'd like to point out that the applicant is doing a complete renovation inside on all three floors, so a lot more, a lot of money is being invested in the building than this 19,007, but that is uh, the investment that's pertinent to this particular facade program. And again, unless there are questions, the, the facade grant review committee uh, is approving uh, the, 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 um, uh, the request, and if there, if there are no questions at this time, uh, staff is requesting that um, Necessarily approve uh, funding uh, in amount of nine thousand eight hundred eighty-seven dollars, uh, and authorizing the, 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 mm -hmm. and the chairman to uh, to execute. Motion by Commissioner Hill, second by Commissioner Sheehan. All in favor of the motion indicate so by saying aye. 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 As opposed, motion carries. Any further business come before the CRA, Thomas? There is none, Mayor. Thank then you. Without objection, we'll stand adjourned, and we will reconvene the City Council meeting. Good to have you back, Thomas. Yes, indeed. <laughs> Actually, this is your first, first uh, yeah. meeting back, isn't it? So yes, good to have you back, Thomas. Yeah, good you. to have you back. All right. Absolutely great to be back. <laughs> All right. Uh, so we have reconvened the city council meeting. Go to hearings, ordinances on second reading. All right. You ready, Madam Clerk? I'm ready. All right. Number one. Ordinance number 2015-48, an ordinance of the City of Orlando, Florida, amending the city's adopted growth management plan by updating figure CI-14 to be entitled City of Orlando 2015-2020 to Capital Improvement Element Capital Improvements Fund Schedule, amending policy 2.2.30 in the Capital Improvements Element, providing for severability and an effective date. So moved. Second. Motion by Commissioner Ng, second by Commissioner Sheehan. Is there anyone from the public that would like to testify on this matter? Discussion among commissioners. Hearing none, all in favor of the motion indicate so by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Mo motion carries. Number two, Madam Clerk. Ordinance number 2015-49, an ordinance of the City Council of the City of Orlando, Florida, amending the city's adopted growth management plan to change the future land use map designation for certain land generally located north of Monte Carlo Trail, east of South Rio Grande Avenue, south of West Gore Street, and west of Mack Avenue, comprised of 0.11 acres of land, more or less, from residential low intensity to office low intensity, changing the property zoning designation from R2A to O1, providing for amendment of the city's official future land use and zoning maps, providing for severability, correction of Scrivener's errors, and an effective date. So moved. Second. Motion by Commissioner Ng, second by Commissioner Sheehan. Is there anyone from the public that would like to testify on this matter? Discussion among commissioners. Hearing none, all in favor of the motion indicate so by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, motion carries. <coughs> number three, Madam Clerk. Ordinance number 2015-50, an ordinance of the City <coughs> Council of the City of Orlando, Florida, amending Chapter 65, Part 1B of the Code of the City of Orlando, Florida, <coughs> entitled Board of Zoning Adjustment, by amending Section 65.112 to clarify board voting procedures, providing for codification, correction of Scrivener's errors, severability, and an effective date. So moved. Second. Motion by Commissioner Ring, second by Commissioner Stewart. Is there anyone for the public like to testify on this matter? Discussion among commissioners. Hearing none, all in favor of the motion indicate so by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, motion carries. Number four, Madam Clerk. Ordinance number 2015-51, an ordinance of the City Council of the City of Orlando, Florida, designating certain land generally located north of McCoy Road, southeast of the current southeastern terminus of Hazleton National Drive, and west of Narcusi Road, and comprised of 5.22 acres of land, more or less, as the planned development district with the aircraft noise overlay district on the city's official zoning maps providing a development plan and special land development regulations of the plan development district, providing for severability, correction of Scrivener's errors, and an effective date. Move to adopt. Second. Motion by Commissioner Gray, second by Commissioner Stewart. Is there anyone from the public like to testify on this matter? Discussion among commissioners. Hearing none, all in favor of the motion indicate so by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, motion carries. 
Number five, Madam Clerk. Ordinance number 2015-52, an ordinance of the City Council of the City of Orlando, Florida, relating to Chapter 9, Orlando City Code, Building Security Code, by amending sections 9.09 and 9.10 to reflect terminology changes regarding the Building and Fire Codes Board of Appeal and providing for severability, codification, correction of Scrivener's errors, and an effective date. So moved. Second. Motion by Commissioner Sheehan, second by Commissioner Stewart. Is there anyone from the public like test on this matter? Discussion among commissioners. Hearing none, all in favor of the motion indicate so by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, motion carries. Number six, Madam Clerk. Ordinance number 2015-53, an ordinance of the City Council of the City of Orlando, Florida, relating to Chapter 14, Orlando City Code, Building Trades, by deleting in its entirety and providing for severability, codification, correction of Scrivener's errors, and an effective date. So moved. Second. Motion by Commissioner Ring, second by Commissioner Sheehan. Is there anyone from the public that would like to testify? Discussion among commissioners. Hearing none, all in favor of the motion indicate so by saying aye. Aye. But those opposed, the motion carries. Seven, Madam Clerk. Ordinance number 2015-54, <clears throat> an ordinance of the City Council of the City of Orlando, Florida, relating to Chapter 29, Orlando City Code, Gas Code, by amending Section 29.01, to reflect compliance with the Florida Building Code Fuel Gas Code and providing for severability, codification, correction of Scribner's errors, and an effective date. So moved. Second. Motion by Commissioner Stewart, second by Commissioner Sheehan. Is there anyone from the public that would like to testify on this matter? <clears throat> Discussion among commissioners. Hearing none, all in favor of the motion indicates so by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Number eight, Madam Clerk. Ordinance number 2015-55, an ordinance of the City Council of the City of Orlando, Florida, relating to Chapter 22, Orlando City Code, Electrical Code, by amending Articles 1, 2, and 3 to reflect adoption of the National Electric Code, terminology changes and providing for severability, codification, correction of Scribner's errors, and an effective date. Second. Motion by Commissioner Stewart, second by Commissioner Sheehan. Is there anyone from the public that would like to testify on this matter? Discussion among commissioners. Hearing none, all in favor of the motion indicate so by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, motion carries. Number nine, Madam Clerk. Ordinance number 2015 56, an ordinance of the City Council of the City of Orlando, Florida, relating to Chapter 30A, Orlando City Code, Building Security Code, by amending Sections 30A.01, 30A.03, 30A.06, 30A.12, 30A.13. 30A.38, 30A.45, 30A.46, 30A.48, 30A.49, 30A.50, and 30A.52 to reflect department terminology changes and providing for severability, codification, correction of Scrivener's errors, and an effective date. So moved. Second. Motion by Commissioner Stewart, second by Commissioner Sheehan. Madam Clerk, what were those sections again? <laughs> Special commendation to the I knew you'd ask. <laughs> Is there anyone that would like to testify on this matter? Discussion among commissioners hearing none, all in favor of the motion indicate so by saying aye. Aye. As opposed, motion carries. And number 10, Madam Clerk. Ordinance number 2015-57, an ordinance of the City Council of the City of Orlando, Florida, relating to Chapter 45, Orlando City Code, Solicitor's Permits, Commercial by amending sections 45.01, 45.02, 45.03, and 45.04 to reflect terminology changes regarding business tax receipts and providing for severability, codification, correction of Scribner's errors, and an effective date. So moved. Motion by Commissioner Sheehan, second by Commissioner Stewart. Is there anyone from the public like test on this matter? Discussion among commissioners. Hearing none, all in favor of the motion indicate so by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? And so the motion carries. And just for the benefit of those in attendance or watching, we are cleaning up our, all of our ordinances that have a outdated language or have, are no longer in effect or have been preempted by um, state statute or other common law. So um, quite a bit of staff work has been done. So it seems like we're going quickly through these, but there's no substantive changes to any of these ordinances. It's more merely procedural and modifications of language and updating. 
All right, Madam Clerk, let's uh, get the four first reads. Number one. Ordinance number 2015-60, an ordinance of the City of Orlando, Florida, granting a petition to contract the boundaries of the Randall Park Community Development District as initiated by the District's Board of Supervisors, amending ordinance number 2010-54 to contract the external boundaries of the Randall Park Community Development District, which is generally located at the southwest corner of the intersection of the Central Florida Greenway State Road 417 and the Beach Line, State Road 528, in accordance with said petition, providing for severability, correction of Scrivener's errors, and an effective date. Move to approve. Second. Second. Motion by Commissioner Gray, second by Commissioner Sheehan. Is there anyone public by testify on this matter? Discussion among commissioners. Hearing none, all in favor of the motion indicate so by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, motion carries. Number two, Madam Clerk. Ordinance number 2015-62, an ordinance of the City Council of the City of Orlando, Florida, relating to Article 19, Chapter 2 of the Code of the City of Orlando, Florida, entitled Finance Committee, by amending Sections 2.140 and 2.141 to provide less specificity and member background requirements to ensure a broader candidate pool, to provide an opportunity for members to serve more than two terms, and to clarify the role of the Finance Committee as an advisory board in reviewing the effectiveness of financial policies and strategies. Move to approve. Second. <laughs> I know that's right. Motion by Commissioner um, Ings. <laughs> Second by Commissioner Hill. Uh, discuss, let's see, uh, is there anyone like testify on this matter? Discussion among commissioners. All in favor of the motion indicate so by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed, motion carries. Uh, number three, Madam Clerk. Ordinance number 2015-61, an ordinance of the City Council of the City of Orlando, Florida, relating to Article 6, Chapter 2 of the Code of the City of Orlando, Florida, entitled Chief Financial Officer, by amending Sections 2.29, 2.30, 2.31, 2.32, 2.43, 2.44, 2.45, 2.46, 2.47, 2.48, 2.49, 2.50, 2.51, 2.52, 2.53, 2.54, 2.55, 2.56, 2.57, 2.58, 2.59, 2.60, 2.61, 2.62, 2.63, 2.64, 2.65, 2.66, 2.67, 2.68, 2.69, 2.70, 2.71, 2.72, 2.73, 2.74, 2.75, 2.76, 2.77, 2.78, 2.79, 2.80, 2.81, 2.82, 2.83, 2.84, 2.85, 2.86, 2.87, 2.88, 2.89, 2.90, 2.91, 2.92, 2.93, 2.94, 2.95, 2.96, 2.97, 2.98, 2.99, 2.2, 2.3, 2.4, 2.5, 2.6, 2.7, 2.8, 2.9, 2.10, 2.11, 2.12, 2.13, 2.14, 2.15, 2.16, 2.17, 2.18, 2.19, 2.20, 2.21, 2.22, 2.23, 2.24, 2.25, 2.26, 2.27, 2.28, 2.29, 2.30, 2.31, 2.32, 2.33, 2.34, 2.35, 2.36, 2.37, 2.38, 2.39, 2.40, 2.41, 2.42, 2.43, 2.44, 2.45, 2.46, 2.47, 2.48, 2.49, 2.50, 2.51, 2.52, 2.53, 2.54, 2.55, 2.56, 2.57, 2.58, 2.59, 2.60, 2.61, 2.62, 2.63, 2.64, 2.65, 2.66, 2.67, 2.68, 2.69, 2.70, 2.71, 2.72, 2.73, 2.74, 2.75, 2.76, 2.77, 2.78, 2.79, 2.80, 2.81, 2.82, 2.83, 2.84, 2.85, 2.86, 2.87, 2.88, 2.89, 2.90, 2.91, 2.92, 2.93, 2.94, 2.95, 2.96, 2.97, 2.98, 2.99, 2.100, 2.101, 2.102, 2.103, 2.104, 2.105, 2.106, 2.107, 2.108, 2.109, 2.110, 2.111, 2.112, 2.113, 2.114, 2.115, 2.116, 2.117, 2.118, 2.119, 2.120, 2.121, 2.122, 2.123, 2.124, 2.125, 2.126, 2.127, 2.128, 2.129, 2.130, 2.131, 2.132, 2.133, 2.134, 2.135, 2.136, 2.137, 2.138, 2.139, 2.140, 2.151, 2.152, 2.153, 2.154, 2.155, 2.156, 2.157, 2.158, 2.159, 2.160, 2.171, 2.172, 2.173, 2.174, 2.175, 2.176, 2.177, 2.178, 2.178, 2.179, 2.180, 2.181, 2.182, 2.183, 2.184, 2.185, 2.186, 2.187, 2.188, 2.189, 2.190, 2.191, 2.192, 2.193, 2.194, 2.195, 2.196, 2.197, 2.198, 2.199, 2.200, 2.201, 2.202, 2.203, 2.204, 2.205, 2.206, 2.207, 2.208, 2.209, 2.210, 2.211, 2.212, 2.213, 2.214, 2.215, 2.216, 2.217, 2.218, 2.219, 2.220, 2.221, 2.222, 2.223, 2.224, 2.225, 2.226, 2.227, 2.228, 2.229, 2.230, 2.231, 2.232, 2.233, 2.234, 2.235, 2.236, 2.237, 2.238, 2.239, 2.240, 2.241, 2.242, 2.243, 2.244, 2.245, 2.246, 2.247, 2.248, 2.249, 2.250, 2.251, 2.252, 2.253, 2.254, 2.255, 2.256, 2.257, 2.258, 2.259, 2.260, 2.271, 2.272, 2.273, 2.274, 2.275, 2.276, 2.277, 2.278, 2.279, 2.280, 2.291, 2.292, 2.293, 2.294, 2.295, 2.296, 2.297, 2.298, 2.299, 2.300, 2.301, 2.302, 2.303, 2.304, 2.305, 2.306, 2.307, 2.308, 2.309, 2.310, 2.311, 2.312, 2.313, 2.314, 2.315, 2.316, 2.317, 2.318, 2.319, 2.320, 2.321, 2.322, 2.323, 2.324, 2.325, 2.326, 2.327, 2.328, 2.329, 2.330, 2.331, 2.332, 2.333, 2.334, 2.335, 2.336, 2.337, 2.338, 2.339, 2.440, 2.451, 2.452, 2.453, 2.454, 2.455, 2.456, 2.457, 2.458, 2.459, 2.460, 2.471, 2.472, 2.473, 2.474, 2.475, 2.476, 2.477, 2.478, 2.479, 2.480, 2.491, 2.492, 2.493, 2.494, 2.495, 2.496, 2.497, 2.498, 2.499, 2.500, 2.600, 2.700, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800, 2.800